You know, much of my ministry is geared toward those who will be left behind to go through the most horrible time period the world has ever known, known as the tribulation period. And what the tribulation period is, is a time in which God will attempt to save as many people as he possibly can the first half of the tribulation period, actually throughout the tribulation period, I believe. And when I say attempt, I mean that he isn't going to make you do anything. You will either accept the gospel or you'll reject it. That's the way it is today. You know, God has left people here on this earth who have become Christians, not for the sake of being blessed, but the, for the sake of being a blessing to others, and that, and that blessing being to tell others about Jesus Christ and that he is the only way to heaven. Well, that's not going to change during the tribulation period. In fact, it's going to be intensified that much more because it's the last seven years. So before he does uh, start this tribulation period, there will be an event called the rapture of the church. Now, the Bible says that when this rapture of the church takes place, time will be like any other time here on earth, meaning that people will be giving it in marriage and uh, doing the normal things of life. And out of nowhere, uh, the rapture of the church will take place in which millions upon millions of people throughout the world will be taken and snatched from this earth to be with the Lord. Now, that will leave no Christians upon the earth. Now, that's this is when the uh, the Lord, once, he's, once the tribulation period begins, he will also bring two witnesses. And this is a, one way of knowing that the tribulation period has started. There will be two identifying marks. One, there will be a man who will rise up, known as the Antichrist, who will make peace with Israel and many. And the Bible says in Daniel uh, 9, 25 to 27, that he will li li likely rise up out of the European Union, which is the revived Roman Empire of today. And the Bible says that this uh, peace accord will last for seven years. Now, whether or not it will be stated as seven years uh, in the plan, uh, nobody really knows, but the Bible does say that it will last for seven years. But you should be looking for this to happen where Israel makes peace with many and with this special leader. Now, the second thing that you should be looking for is that there will be two witnesses who will come on the, uh, on the scene. And this is found in Revelation chapter 11. And throughout chapter 11, it talks about their characteristics. And a couple of the characteristics that you should be looking for is that they will preach the gospel on the streets of Jerusalem and many people will get saved. And from their ministry, they will uh, bring about a revival that will bring about 144,000 witnesses. Now, these witnesses will be sealed by God to go out and preach the gospel to uh, all throughout the world. But the two witnesses will, uh, for the most part of the three, three and a half, first three and a half years of the tribulation period, they will concentrate on preaching the gospel on the streets of Jerusalem. And they will have uh, quite a number of special characteristics that will be supernatural. Now, there's one thing you should know. Once the tribulation period begins, once the rapture takes place, this world will go from natural to supernatural. And some of the characteristics that you should know about regarding these two witnesses is they will be able to kill anyone in the manner in which they, uh, that person tries to kill them. These two men will be literally indestructible. No one will be able to kill them for three and a half years. And you know, the Bible says that one of their characteristics is that if anyone tries to kill them, that fire will proceed from their mouth and will devour that person. They will also stop the rain for three and a half years and they'll be able to turn the, the water into blood. And one other thing that you might want to know is that the, the, the Bible says in verse uh, 6 of chapter 11 that they will be able to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they like. So it won't be just a number of plagues. It will be any plague that they want. And as I said, nobody will be able to kill them. And the Bible says that when they are finally killed, it will be by the man of sin, which will be the, by, by the Antichrist. But one of the funny things about this whole situation is that the world will hate them so much. And this is the state of what you need to know about the world at this time. This will be a supernatural time, but people of the earth will hate them as uh, more than anything in the world. In fact, when they die, the Bible says that the world will give presents as if it's either somebody's birthday or Christmas has just happened. And let me say one more thing about this uh, time period. That if, if they're trying to kill these two witnesses for proclaiming the gospel and the truth, how much more are they uh, going to be trying to kill Christians? I believe that during this first three and a half years, years that there will be a great revival and many will become Christians, but at the same time there will be a hatred that will come upon the earth toward Christians. And it will be time, a time is what I believe is in chapter, Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony uh, which 
they held, and uh, they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto them, and every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little while, or a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So during this first half, I believe, like I said, there'll be many who will come to the Lord, but at the same time, it will be at great cost, uh, and that there'll be many that will die during this early part, because I think there'll be a great hatred toward Christians, uh, and much of it will be because of these two witnesses. But they won't be able to be killed, and they'll have supernatural powers. At the same time, there will also be angels flying through the air. And this is found in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. It says, And I saw another uh, angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people. So these angels will be going throughout the world telling people in their own language that they need to come to the Lord. And believe it or not, many will refuse to do so. Their hatred for God will be so great that they will refuse and will not. Uh, and this is and the Antichrist hasn't even been revealed at this time. Now, picking up in chapter 6, it's talking about a man who will ascend and will bring peace. And that's in the, when the first seal is broken. Now, it's talking about the Antichrist. But right, uh, right after he brings peace, the Bible says that the second seal will be broken and then war will break out. Now, it's unknown when this war will take place. Uh, I, you know, it's hard to say at what point during the seven-year tribulation period that that will take place. It may be toward the end of the first half of the tribulation period, just before the Antichrist declares himself to be God. I tend to believe that's probably when it will take place, but you know, no one really knows the timing of that. But, of course, when this great war does take place, the Bible says that there will be famine and uh, pestilence on the earth because of this great war and the devastation that it will that will take place. And of course, many people will die upon, upon, upon the face of the earth. And the Bible says in chapter 6, verse 8, it says, And I looked and beheld a pale horse, and in, and in his name that uh, sat on, the, the, uh, on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with fat and hunger, and with death, and with beasts of the earth. Now that can be interpreted either one of two ways. That can be that one quarter of the world's population was killed through these different uh, circumstances, or it can be taken as that one quarter of the earth was uh, in war, as saying that this, this, only a section of the earth was actually in war, whereas three quarters of the earth was not in war. I tend to believe that one quarter of the world's population will be killed. So there's probably going to be at some point in time what I believe to be a nuclear war. But either way, many people will die. And this war will be bad enough to where it will absolutely raise the price of food and of other commodities that are out there. So it will affect the whole world. But this is probably the scenario that I see happening during this time period. I believe that at some point in time that Satan will enter the Antichrist. And when he does, and of course when he's kicked out of heaven, that's found in Revelation chapter 12, that Satan will come to the earth along with his demonic uh, army. And this demonic army will infiltrate and possess all who have already rejected the Lord as Savior. As I said earlier, I believe that the first half of the tribulation period is reserved for the Lord to attempt to try to save as many people as possible. Those who do not accept Jesus as Savior will accept the Antichrist as their Messiah. And this is under the guidelines of what it says in Second Thessalonians 2, verse 10 and 11, where it states that if they don't believe the love of the truth, which is to be saved, then they'll, ex they'll uh, uh, accept the strong delusion that will come later, which will be Satan's strong delusion. So there will be many who will reject Christ and who will, in turn, be affected by the great delusion or this great lie that Satan will bring about. And the Bible says this will be a strong delusion that no one will be able to break. It'll almost be like a drug, and I, that's the way how I categorize it, that you won't be able to beat. Once you've accepted this strong delusion, and reje once you've rejected Christ and, and accepted this strong delusion, it will be like a that you simply won't be able to break free from. Even if you wanted to, you won't be able to. And that's the way drugs are today. And, you know, you can call it whatever you want, but the bottom line is it's going to be so this pull toward this great delusion will be so hard that you won't be able to see the truth. But I think once Satan comes down and infiltrates 
and possesses the Antichrist and these other demonic uh, angels that will come down with Satan. And there will be a whole horde of them. And they will also possess bodies. They will supernaturally take over the world. And the first thing I believe they will do is destroy any earthly army that could be that strong, seems to be strong enough or the strongest armies out there that might pose a threat to Satan's and the Antichrist's reign. And the Bible says that the Antichrist will rise up out of a ten-nation kingdom. And I believe once, that, once he puts down all powers, he will then declare himself to be God, and then he will set up his one-world kingdom. Uh, but I think there will be some pullback from that, because the Bible says in uh, Daniel 7.24 that his, in his ten kingdom nations, there will be three nations that will rebel, but he'll, he will subdue them. So I believe when he declares himself to be God, not everybody's going to be on board. And he'll have to put down three nations. But once all the uh, military dirty work is done and over with, he will then set himself up as the world dictator. Now, this is not no new world order or some type of Illuminati type situation. This is where Satan supernaturally comes down and takes over the world. Now, remember, this world has already gone supernatural, so... A supernatural being such as Satan will not be anything new. I mean, let's face it, we've already looked and watched uh, angels flying through the air proclaiming the gospel. We've already witnessed two witnesses on the streets of Jerusalem spitting fire from their mouth and destroying anybody who tries to destroy them. And also, they are unable to be destroyed. They brought plagues from all over the place. They've stopped the rain from falling, and they've, you know, they've, they're, they're just uh, supernatural beings in and of themselves. So Satan being, or the Antichrist being a supernatural being, won't be anything new. So one thing's for sure, this world will be completely different than what it used to be, uh, or it is today. But now that Satan has gained control of all military powers, and is now unable to be stopped, and as I've said in the past, that if, unless God or the Lord Jesus Christ did not come back for his second coming. Satan would rule this earth per perpetually, in other words, without end. But it will only be through Jesus that Satan will be defeated and that he will bring about his thousand-year millennial reign. But certainly there will be no earthly power that will be able to stop him. And as I said, he will then set up his world kingdom, and it will be a dictatorship, and he'll have plenty of help, demonic army. And truthfully speaking, he'll need it because the bottom line is there's no way he'd be able to enforce his system without that type of help. And the two things that he will enforce is this right here. Is he will tell everybody on the earth, it doesn't matter where they're at, from the deepest jungles in Africa to Main Street in the richest castles in the world. They will all have to bow and they'll all have to do what Satan wants them to do. And the two things that he will enforce are, are these two. Number one, he will ask everyone to take a mark. It will either be on your forehead or on your hand. And you won't be able to buy or sell or go into business or do any kind of transaction in Satan's kingdom, which will be worldwide, without it. In other words, you won't be able to buy, sell, have a house, have a car, nothing. You won't be able to do anything without this mark. And you might ask, well, how in the world is he going to enforce this worldwide? Well, again, this will be a supernatural time in which demons probably will be sent out throughout the world to possess those who are in that area, no matter where it is, to make sure that the mark is upheld. And, you know, unless that happens, it simply won't be a worldwide thing. Let me tell you one thing that right now is going on. In India, 90% of the economy of India at this present time is a black market, meaning it's under the table. Only about uh, three to five percent of the Indian population pays taxes, and that's because everybody pays by cash. And by doing so, they avoid paying any taxes at all. Everything's under the table. The Indian government simply can't stop it from happening. They already know that this is a problem. So, in order for Satan to be able to make his economy work in all of the world, he's going to have to be a supernatural being, and he's going to have to make people do this. I mean, we're talking about a nuclear-powered nation who can't control the uh, economy of their own nation, cannot enforce it. Uh, how in the world is an outside ruler going to do it unless it's a supernatural thing? Well, I believe that's exactly what's going to happen, that Satan will bring about a supernatural system that will be enforced supernaturally, and the penalty at some point in time will be death if you don't comply. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, everybody will comply except for those who have accepted Jesus as Savior. There will also be a second 
stipulation that you will be at, you'll have to follow, and that is, is that you will have to worship the Antichrist and his image. And everyone will do so because they will believe the lie, because if they rejected Jesus as Savior, they will believe that uh, the Antichrist and Satan, that they are the Messiah. And that will be their Messiah. Now, does that mean that they won't believe that there is that God, the God of heaven, is not real? That certainly does not. In fact, the Bible says in various, in many different places, that uh, when God poured out a plague, that those who had taken the mark looked up to heaven and cursed God, knowing whom they uh, were cursing, and that, the, the, that He was the real God and the only true Savior. But they simply would not repent, and that's found in Revelation chapter 16, starting with verse 6. Now, there's something else I also believe. There's, I believe that throughout the first part of the tribulation period on into the second part of the tribulation period, that God will use plagues to try to get men to come to the Lord before it's everlasting too, too late. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. In Revelation chapter 9, the fifth seal, or the fifth angel sounds, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now, when that bottomless pit is open a demon, scorpion-type flying uh, monster, or uh, should I say many of these demon-type scorpion monsters, will come flying out, and they will be controlled by God. These, men, these demons, these demon monsters will go about stinging men, not killing them, but stinging them, torturing them, and they will only torture those who have not the seal of God, in other words, those who have not come to the Lord as Savior. Now, I believe this is going to happen during the first half of the tribulation period before the mark is given. And I believe that's just going to be one way God will say, listen, come to me as Savior. Because these monsters will not sting and torture anyone who has the seal of God or has come to the Savior at this point in time. And I'm sure that many will come to the Savior after that happens. But then the Bible says that the sixth seal, or should I say the sixth trumpet, will be sounded. And there will be a great army that will be assembled. In fact, God will release four angels that he has uh, prepared for this time. And they will gather this army of 200 million soldiers. And they will be supernatural soldiers, the Bible says. And it says in verse 18, it says, By these three was the third part of men killed. Again, I believe that God will use these three demons to convince men to come to know him. And those that have not will be killed. And how do I know this? Take a look at what it says in the following verses in chapter 9. Following this great uh, slaughter, it says in verse 20, uh, it says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murderers, uh, nor of their sorceries, uh, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. In other words, these at this point in time, these men were still doing the normal things that men do, and they, will worship, they weren't worshiping Satan, which they will be worshiping once the mark is uh, revealed. And the Bible says that in verse uh, chapter 13 of Revelation, verse 8, that at that time oh, there was only two gods, either Jesus Christ or the Antichrist. And they didn't worship anybody else but those two. But at this time, the Bible says that they were still worshiping idols. So I have to believe that at this time, that uh, this is before the mark is introduced. Because men are still worshiping uh, things that they created by of their hands, and not exclusively uh, Satan or Jesus Christ. Because when Satan enters into the Antichrist, uh, he will be the Messiah. And the world will look to him as being the Messiah, and they will worship him. And he will, not allow to have, he will not allow any other gods to be before him. And that includes Jesus Christ. So all gods will be put aside at that time. Only Jesus and the Antichrist will be worshipped during this time period. Oh, and there's one other thing that you probably should know about the first half of the tribulation period. Some point in time during the first half, the Jerusalem temple will have to be rebuilt. Now, where it will be rebuilt, uh, I believe it will be rebuilt on the Temple Mount, but some people believe it will be elsewhere. But wherever it is rebuilt, the Bible says it will be rebuilt during this time because the Bible says at the halfway point of the tribulation period that Satan will, or should I say the Antichrist, will walk into the temple and he will desecrate it, and that's when he will declare himself to be God, the Messiah. And he will demand worship from the world. 
And frankly, the world won't be in any uh, shape to be able to do anything else but worship him. And as I said earlier, that if you reject Jesus Christ as uh, the Savior, you will believe the lie. And the lie will be that Satan is the, the Messiah, the, the new Christ. And once the mark and um, the worship system for the Antichrist is established, that is when the Lord will then begin to systematically destroy the kingdom of the Antichrist. And this will be a horrible time, and you can look up the different plagues that God will send upon the earth. In fact, it would be better if you just got my Tribulation Period Survival Guide, because it will give you a blow-by-blow description in chronological order as to when things are going to happen. It will also give you survival tips on what you need to do. But I will be honest with you, if you go through it into the tribulation period, the chances of your survival are very slim. It's most likely that you will be killed long before you get to the end. But there, are, there will be people who will survive. Because the Bible is clear in uh, Revelation chapter 20 that there will be those who will enter into the millennium to repopulate it for the thousand year reign of Christ. So it's not impossible to survive. But the Bible does say that unless the days were shortened, talking about the tribulation period, that no flesh would survive. And it is for the sake of the elect or those who've gotten saved during the tribulation period that the days are shortened. And that's found in Matthew 24, 22. But as I said, that this will be a time in which God will systematically break down the kingdom of the Antichrist, for which there will be no food left, there will be no, no water, no drinkable water. Major earthquakes will destroy every major city in the world. In fact, the Bible says that every mountain will be flattened. And this world, as we know it, will be unrecognizable. And if not for the second coming of Christ, it would be uninhabitable. But certainly at this time, I would recommend that you get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. There are nine languages that you can get uh, that it's written in. And this is the downloaded version that you'll be able to get uh, these nine languages. It's free to anyone who wants to uh, read it, and uh, if, in fact, you are uh, you have a lost loved one that you want to get this to, I'd recommend that you get the paperback version, which is, uh, uh, I think, somewhere around eight dollars. But you, at least you'll have you, your loved one will be able to hold this in their hand and have a guide if, in fact, they do not make it uh, through the rapture of the church and do end up going through the tribulation period. You know, if I were you and I had a loved one, I'd want to make sure that every single one of them had this book because. If you don't know for sure that they know the Lord, this is something that they're going to need to they're going to need to have. And as always, if you don't know Jesus as Savior today, I'd recommend that you make that uh, decision right now. You can't put it off because you may not live another day. You know, the 150,000 people are going to die today. You might be one of them. And if you are, where would you spend eternity? If you don't know the Lord, you're going to spend it in, in eternity in hell. And once you get there, there's no getting out. So make that decision for Christ today. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.